just a warning, this is a, a little bit of a departure from my normal broadcast schedule. I'm going to start out with a letter I got from from uh, a fan in Washington, and it's by someone named F. It's, uh, F says, Dear Peter, love the show. I just have some, I want some advice from you. I'm this, like, shy teen who has a radio show. And everyone who hears my voice thinks that I have a big, I have big drooping cheeks and that my lips are too long for my body, even though I'm perfectly well proportioned. And it's just my vocal cords are probably shaped like spiro keats, and that's what makes me sound like a nine foot tall helium addict. And that was from F from Washington. Well, we, uh, well, F, I just gotta, I need to tell you that. You know, people have worse problems than that. When I was, I sound like that now. I'm not even a teen anymore. I haven't been a teen for longer than I will admit. But I'm, st- I still sound like this. So don't lose hope. I was reading Podcast Entrepreneur magazine, and they said the biggest problem with podcasts is that they all treat their audience like cows whose attention the hosts deserve because the hosts were taught by their elementary school guidance counselors that they just magically deserve attention and are special even though in reality nobody's special or talented or qualified to do anything but be janitors for the rest of their lives, unless of course the powerful people who have incentives to spread this kind of attitude can puppeteer them somehow. But if I'm the one you're asking, Podcast Entrepreneur Magazine is a little bit of a conspiracy theory magazine, since a lot of the podcasts, they, they're they always, you know, the top ten ones are always about, you know, sightings, that kind of thing. And even though, mo- like, no one ever heard of any of these podcasts, and it's really poorly photocopied, it's that kind of magazine and it's you can't it's not an audio magazine either you read about podcasts which is like ugh, like forget about it but anyway so i i learned my lesson and i realized that my i shouldn't i should stop treating my audience like they they should just be happy that i'm gracing them with my voice my voice is made of golden jewels and my audience shall praise me for my good job. I should get a good job award just for trying. So this this is the first podcast where I really I am audience got an audience centered content and I have a really really good guest uh, who's a meditator. He's like a white dreadlock guy named Forrest and I'm not talking about Forrest spelled like gathering of woody planties because this guy is a total he's an adult flower child and he loves to meditate all day long so i just wanted to say hello to forest how are you doing today how long have you meditated for Hi, Peter. I've been meditating for nine hours. I Well, here's... So here's my daily routine. I wake up at three in the morning, and I meditate in the Buddhist style for five... I'm sorry, for six hours. And then I meditate in the Jain style for six hours. Wait, why do you switch? Those are like two pretty different ways i mean i can think of about 10 to like first of all buddhist meditation you're supposed to be focusing on how there's no self and i think that the jains are pretty pretty selfy you know <laughs> they got all they got the whole soul deal and the karma well they both so how, why would you switch well because you see i can't decide which one shows me who I am. I need to be the master of my mind. That is my goal. What's your goal? I want to get a lot of hits on my podcast. Yes, why did I think that was the case for you? You are a poor little lost moat in the sea of beginningless rebirths. And I am 
Well, what are you? Aren't you supposed to be... Whatever happened, a humility... Well, you didn't let me finish. I was just going to say, I am nothing but a moat lost in the beginningless rebirth sea, and I merely wish to learn the truth, and I cannot de decide, and I cannot decide yet whether the truth lies within the Buddha Dharma or the Jaina Dharma, and I am so sorry that I can't be, I can't jump right at these kinds of questions, it's not necessarily all that easy to find out. I don't know why everybody's expecting me within not even one lifetime, but within a matter of days or hours to decide to come to a, a firm set conclusion on what is honestly advertised as like the largest, most cosmic questions in the world. Everybody gets mad at me for not being able to decide, but here's what I have to say to them. What is a billion and six divided by three thousand and forty-two? Quick, 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 right now. Go, go, go. What do you think, Peter? I, I'm not even going to begin. I have no clue. I'd need a calculator for that. I don't even remember what numbers you just said, just as I suspected. And I think questions like that are infinitely more simple and clear-cut than these gigantic, enormous questions that are cast upon our poor little ape minds. And it is for this reason that I try both forms of meditation, because I need to give each dharma its time to decide, time to make its position clear to my mind. That's fair enough. But six hours of each, each day, and when do you wake up? I wake up at three in the morning, and I give six hours to the Buddha Dharma, and I give six hours to the Jain Dharma, and there's and six back and forth style. So I finish my meditation at about three p.m. when I go into work. And where do you work? I am a glue factory supervisor. Glue? Is that like the horse style? Don't be ridiculous. I would never put my hands in such a disc, such a hideous backwards business as horse style glue. I, I had a pudding man on last week. That's very nice. How nice. But I am not here to speak of my, my day job, for it is rather quotidian. Unfortunately, I certainly would wish to be some kind of a thought master, wouldn't we all? But uh, no, I, I leave that for the 12 hours between 3 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon, when I am deciding between one and the other. Let me hear about some of your mortifications. I hear you guys, you meditators sometimes, you know, have a lot of those... Well, firstly, of course, I reject all of the meats and the potions of goofiness and the milks, and I reject only such clothing as will make me feel good. I have, I have the bad clothing that hurts, and I live outside, except when I go into the dungeon which uh, is my word for work I have a house and I go there only to shower and I occasionally it's actually my friend's house but he lets me stay there but anyway so when I go to the dungeon I work at the glue place it's na all natural vegan glue which is good because I that's my diet and you probably think you probably think they're it's, it's, it's stupid, but I just want to tell you that you'll see what happens. I'm not the one with the who's gonna have a bad time. All that suffering doesn't just go nowhere. All that fear and horror doesn't just 
Go away after the deaths of the creatures. Listen, I don't need meat either, man. I don't know what the heck you're getting all sanctimonious for. Ah, then you shall dine in the hall of the pearls. Something tells me that, like, you know, hey, we're going to do this thing where you're weird for a while, and then I'm going to ask you a question, and you're going to be like, well, actually, my name's uh, Ted, and I work at the auto shop, and I don't, you know, in Secaucus, you know, that kind of thing. I already told you my name was Forrest, and I am a forest man, and I thought you were going to explain that, and we met in the forest. What were you doing in the forest? Well, I was just, you know, I just I had a lot on my mind. I just couldn't deal with all the, all the things I was thinking about. Just so it was really takes a lot out of you doing this podcast. I'm supposed to do 50 episodes. Nobody wants to listen to it. And, I just, and it takes a lot of work. And I should be looking for a job and an apartment. Well, I mean, I have a job, but I don't like it. And I, I live in a place that I'm not going to talk about because it's embarrassing or something and I you know and I listen Peter I heard your episode when you just beat yourself up about all these things that I thought were you don't have to worry about any of that kind of thing you know I heard a child 30 or so years young say you do you to one of her friends, and I thought that was a perfect thing for me to tell you. You do you. No one will tell you to do otherwise. Has someone told you to do something other than you? No, nobody tells me to do anything. They just say, yeah, you can do whatever you want. I just want someone to tell me the truth for once. Listen, let's, it's time for you and me to meditize together. For you and I have a maelstrom of thoughts and hatreds and feelings about our own minds that we simply cannot divest ourselves of so easily just by, you know, podcasting and it's time for you and me to have a session, a meditazione. Now repeat after me. This darksome burn, horseback brown. This darksome burn, horseback brown. His roll rock high road roaring down. His r- his roll rock high road roaring down. In coop and in comb, the fleece of his foam. In coop and in comb, the fleece of his foam. Flutes and low to the lake falls home. Flutes and low to the lake falls home. The wind puff bonnet of fawn froth. The wind puff bonnet of fawn froth turns and twindles over the broth. Turns and twindles over the broth of the pool so pitch black fell frowning. Of the pool so pitch black fell frowning. It rounds and rounds despair to drowning. It rounds and rounds despair to dr- This is kind of a skip. Repeat after me. Degged with dew, dappled with dew. Degged with dew, dappled with dew. Are the groins of the braise that the brook treads through. Are the groins of the braise that the br- that the brook treads through. Wiry heath packs, flitches of fern. Wiry heath packs, flitches of fern, and a bead bonny ash. That sits over the burn, and a bead bonny ash that sits over the burn. And now I will go on. What would the world be once bereft of wit and of wildness? Let them be left. Oh, let them be left. Wildness and wit. 
Long live the weeds in the wilderness yet. That was beautiful. Was that a prayer? What was that? That was a, a beautiful poem that I love. Yeah, me too. That was really good. Uh, I feel better now. I feel like I'm not doing the wrong thing. Am I... Is that right? It's, you know, whatever, man. It's just all... Just as long as it's okay. Yeah, I yeah, I'm okay. Thanks for helping me. You know, I need a little pat on the back. I need a little shoe in the door. And I got it from Forrest. My friend Forrest. I like you more than the last guy because you're not... What do you think about natural foods? Don't even get me started. Each natural food is a, a pearl the size of the moon. And an old man carries the pearl. And as he walks down the sylvan path, the pearl grows brighter and grows bigger in his hands. It grows from the size of a pea, which many pearls are sh the size of. And it grows to the size of a bouncing ball. And thence to the size of a beautiful softball. I mean softball. And then from the side to this to the size of a volleyball. And from there up up into the sky where the pearl grows biggest of all and shines silvery moonlight upon our skin except right under the eyes and nose where our brow and nose casts a beautiful clothy shadow onto our faces and we twindle about in the moonlight do you remember that line in the poem about twindling yeah i remember and do you remember how beautiful the moon was when you first looked up into the sky and thought, I live in a land with a moon. I don't remember ever thinking that. I kind of always just, you know, just totally took the moon for granted. I just figured, you know, who cares? I feel like I've I really plumbed this depth or this height. It's just a moon, whatever. But one, when you were a little boy, I suspect you looked up in the moon and you said to your mother, or you said to that father of yours, Mother or father, what is that thing up there? And they said to you, You are our boy. You are our time. Mm -hmm. And that was a song called Always Hold On by this band called, this new age band called Lamech. Is that right? Lamech, I think? Uh, and I don't normally do this, but Forrest passed me this weird note on his way out of the studio right before he disappeared into a puff of a beam. No, I'm just kidding. He uses, a, he uses the fire exit, but which is kind of annoying, but that's okay. Uh, so, let me, he said I should read the note, and, uh, and that's what I'm gonna do. So it says, Dear Peter, love the show. I uh, just thought you might like this little text I found in a book called the Su- Su- I'm not gonna say that, I don't know that word. Anyway, so it says, so whatever it is, 
Um, sixth lecture, book two, line or text 43 to 45. Uh, a Vedic priest. Those who always feed 2,000 holy mendicants acquire great merit and become gods. This is the teaching of the Veda. To which our Draka responded, He who always feeds 2,000 holy cats, i.e. Brahmanas, will have to endure great pains in hell, being surrounded by hungry beasts. He who despises the law that enjoins compassion and praises the law that permits slaughter, and who feeds but a single unprincipled man, even if he be a king, will go to darkness and not to the gods. So thanks. It's kind of scary. I guess I get it. Thanks, Forrest, again.